So welcome along, and not, Thanks, a, Laura. not the first time that we've seen a delegation from the Curra here, of course, but tell us what you're here specifically to do this week. We're here uh, to talk to our partners, and we have plenty of partners here in Dubai, uh, principally Dubai Duty Free, who have been great supporters of Irish racing and sponsored the Dubai Duty Free Irish Derby, so we're here to talk to them uh, about the race. And we're also here to see Jebel Ali, who are also uh, sponsors of the Curra. And uh, that's really the reason that we're here, but you don't need any reason to come to Dubai. <laughs> what a beautiful place to be in November. Uh, we'll swap this for Irish weather this time of year. And the links between the Curra and Dubai are very strong, aren't they? As you say, there always seems to be some sort of Dubai-based sponsorship going on there. Come back for a very long time. I mean, Michael Osborne came to Dubai a very long time ago, and he did a lot of great work then, and, and uh, that's been built on over the years. And look at what uh, look at what there is here in Dubai now. But as well as that, uh, Sheikh Mohammed and Sheikh Hamdan are investors in the Curra as well, so they own part of the Curra. So there are very very close links between Dubai and the Curra. And it's appropriate that we've come over here now to talk about uh, the new Curra, which has been redeveloped, and it's a fantastic facility. And we're here to spread the gospel of that as well and tell people uh, how great it is and hopefully you know, get people coming from here uh, to see the Curra. Well, we're lucky enough to see the Curra a lot on, on the TV here. It yeah, does absolutely. look fantastic. Is it now finished or do you have more tinkering to do? No, no, it's finished. It's completely finished. Um, you like you know, like any facility when you know when you're rebuilding when you're rebuilding for three years when you reopen there are some there are some teething problems and we some minor problems but they're they're all dealt with and we're really delighted really delighted with how it's worked out the Longin Irish Champions weekend in September was a was a great success and uh, the meetings at the back end of the year went really well we're going to make some changes through the closed season so the facility will be slightly different when it opens when it opens next year but we're really we're really excited and can't wait to get going again next year and you had a, a, a tricky few years i think with, with these developments people are always out out to get you yeah. but your emphasis now is on trying to sort of work with the local community and getting race goers in there oh yeah well the cura has always been uh, has always had a very very strong local involvement in it the people of kildare you know, just came to the Curra and, the, and they owned the Curra and they felt that great sense of ownership. And uh, the development time is always going to be difficult, you know, where, where you knock and you're building again, so you're going to inconvenience your, your patrons with your temporary facilities. So we've got to, you know, we've got to welcome them back, which we have done. And uh, the, you know, if you said, what's our biggest objective for next year, is to, is to make sure that the locals come and come in their numbers. Uh, to the Curra next year and that for me will be success if the locals support the Curra and they absolutely are supporting mm. it there's no there's no doubt about that we got a very strong sense uh, from them that they were very pleased with what was done we sought their views we asked them what they thought of it and uh, we've made some changes based on what we've heard from them and I'm very confident the next year that we'll have very very strong local support and I think if you have that you can build on that but that's the most important that's the most important issue facing the Curra. You take the racing for granted. Mm. I mean, it's a it's a super piece of uh, super piece of turf. Uh, it's a very very fair race course. It's been there for hundreds of years. So, you, you sometimes you can kind of take that for granted. But that's what makes the Curra as special as it is. It's just a fantastic race course, and you know we're fortunate enough that we've always had the horses coming there. And uh, it's a question for us of spreading that story as wide as we can for for the 2020 season. I think it's tough for race courses everywhere because you talk about the history of the Curra, which is older than most. Going back 100 years, there wasn't so much competition. There wasn't other sporting events going on. There wasn't 100 different satellite channels. Do you think that racing's always going to be up against it, really, just because the times have moved on? Yeah, it's easy now to stay at home. You mm -hmm. can stay at home and you can sit down and you can watch your television. You can see the racing and you switch and you can watch your football. You can do whatever you want to do. So there's, uh, that's, that's, a, that's a challenge. But you got to, that actually is an interesting, that's, that's actually interesting because then you say, well, you know, what brings people racing? What is it? So then you've got to say, you know, ask yourself and ask everyone, like, how did you get involved in racing? What made you come racing first? For me, as a very young boy, when I went to the Curra first and when I went to Leperstown, which is my local track, when I went to those two race courses of a young boy, I loved the colour, I loved the speed. You know, I love the I love the animal, I love the beauty, I love the smell, I love all that. And you know, if you if you talk to young kids now, young children, that's what they still like about it. So I mean, I think we've got to promote 
you know, the uniqueness of the sport, and that's live sport. So mm. there's something very, very special about live sport. I think that's what we've, you know, that's what we've got to promote. You know, the day at the races, the excitement, the speed, the competitiveness and all that. So, you know, I think that yes, people can stay at home, they can watch it all, but there is absolutely nothing like live sport and definitely there's nothing like drive racing to, uh, to get you going. Mm, absolutely. And you've sort of tinkered around a little bit with the race times and, and, and the, the programme. Mm. You did quite a lot on Friday nights last year in terms of group races. Will that yeah. continue in 2020? We're going to change it a bit. We tried Friday nights for the first time for the first time last year. Though, funny enough, the Dubai Duty Free Irish Derby weekend always had a Friday night, and that was always very strong. That was always a very, very big. That was a big meeting. And we've changed the, the Dubai Duty Free Irish Derby weekend for next year. So the Friday night, is, the Friday night meeting will kick off the weekend with the Dubai to buy duty for the Irish Derby on the Saturday and we'll have a Sunday meeting as well. So that Friday meeting, you know, we think that's going to be bigger and better again next year than it was. We had four Friday meetings in August. They didn't work that well, but it was a new concept. And what we've done this year, we're going to change it around. We'll have a Wednesday evening meeting. We'll have a couple of Friday nights. We'll have a Saturday evening meeting. So that we just kind of try that, see what works. I think sometimes in racing we make the mistake of trying something once and you don't give the customer long enough to get used to it. You don't listen to them closely enough to hear what they're saying. So, you know, we'll mix it around a bit for next year, but we've launched our programme for next year already, and that's mm -hmm. a big part of it, I think. Maybe last year, because of the development, we were late coming, you know, coming to the market with our programme. Our programme is out already for next year, so we know exactly what's happening and when it's happening. So, you know, we've a big launch of that next week in the Curra, and uh, we've launched our membership for next year. Um, so we've we've a lot done, and we hope that you know people will get the dates, you know, into their calendars good and early, and then we will put on the product to make next year a big year. And one more for you: the Dubai Duty Free Irish Derby has come for a little bit of criticism over the years. Small fields dominated by by Bally Doyle. Is there anything you're going to try and do, maybe working with the sponsors and working with the, the pattern book, to try and increase participation in that? Yeah, well, I think the Dubai Duty Free Irish Derby has always attracted the best horses, you know, so that's all you can do is get the best horses that are there. And some years you'll be more lucky than others. I mean, in 2017, it was the leading race. It was the leading race of the year. And that's the way it was. You know, some years you don't always you don't always have you don't always have uh, the depth of horses in that category. The three year old staying horses are you know, middle distance horse, you just don't happen to have vintage years. So, um, you know, Aidan O'Brien has dominated over the last number of times. He's had the best horses in that. But, you know, that's, that was just the way it was, the way it was for a couple of years. What we will do is that we will make sure that we get the best horses available to come to the Curragh, be they in Ireland, be they in England, be they in France. We will do our very best to make sure that they're there. And that's all we can do. Uh, and I'm very confident that if we get the best horses that are there, that the cream will come to the top and the Dubai Duty for the Irish Derby will reign right on top as the race that it deserves to be. And I said one more, but I've actually got one more. I was looking at your membership rates this morning. You mentioned you want to get more people in there. It yeah. seems to me incredibly competitive and putting it bluntly, I don't really know what people were complaining about. Yeah. Well, when the membership was launched last year, there were a number of different categories of membership. That were, that, were, that were launched and some of the more some of the more expensive ones didn't actually perform that well so what we decided we do this year we'd simplify it so we really have one category membership and you're right it's exceptionally cheap so i mean you can get membership for the curve for for 2020 for all 20 meetings for the five classics for the dubai duty free irish derby for 260 euros you can put that in with your own reserve seat for 560 euros, so that is that is that is exceptionally good value. But we wanted to pitch it at a level, you know, where price wasn't a factor, because what we really want to do is to make sure that people get behind the curra and we make it affordable for them to do so. But as well as as pitching it at that price, in addition to the domestic market, we'd like to see people building a relationship with the curra. So whether people come to the Irish Derby, whether they whether they whether they travel to the curra you know, for the Dubai Duty for Irish Derby weekend, whether they come for the classics or whatever meetings from, from Dubai or whether they come from England over, we'd like to encourage them to become members, to become a relation, 
but to build a relationship with the Curra so we can communicate with them on a regular basis with what we're doing so we can package the things for them so we'd like to see that membership growing we'd like to see that growing overseas and that's a very cheap membership so if someone's coming over let's say someone's just coming for the Dubai Duty of Irish Derby weekend three meetings one weekend that membership is very affordable mm -hmm. for them as their as their admissions for the for that weekend so we'd like it to appeal to that market so we'd like to build or grow our membership and we'd like to grow that around the world as well so people people come to uh, people come to the Curra uh, on an ongoing basis and feel that they're very much part of the Curra story.